Good evening, everyone. Happy Thursday, February 17th, uh, 2022. 1811, last time I checked. Yeah, so welcome to the Crypto Pyre. Um, this emerged out of a chain of me memetic events and uh, thought we'd do a little bit of computer science and a little bit of um, intentional intentional magic, so to speak. Uh, yes, Snorgaborg, I am very curious about the 1968 Godzilla Destroy All Monsters. That is also a Wes Anderson film. Um, I'd imagine he was he was very young when when he made that film. All right, so we've got a uh, pretty short agenda tonight. I want to keep it, try to keep it around an hour. We'll see, we'll see how <laughs> how burning the crypto bud NFT goes. Um, but first up, I want to talk about MD5 hashes and how they're used in cryptography, uh, specifically my experience with them and how it relates to um, Web2 development with databases. And then uh, that'd be fun to do a little bit of um, group praxis and learn how to burn the NFT together and then I'll fill in y'all with a little bit of the backstory on that and then uh, after that we are going to do a burning ritual so if you have any thoughts or troubling mental demons we shall say that you want to release um, you're invited to MD5 those yourself send me the hash and then we'll burn them together and sort of cathartically release so it's a pretty weird stream um, computer science plus memes plus crypto plus I don't even know new age stuff all right so I guess to start um, we're just gonna talk about MD5 hashes um, and what hashes are. So a hash is used, it's one of the fundamental building blocks of cryptography. So I've got this crazy Rube Goldberg um, Max MSP patch here that we're going to be working in tonight. Um, Max MSP is a programming environment, it's visual, you can mash up text and video and code. Um, in this case we've got a instance of Node.js running, so Max can support that. So there's a bunch of technical stuff underneath this, but I'm going to try to keep this sort of high level, um, as high level as I can about the crypto stuff. So crypto is obviously a big um, buzz word these days, uh, of course, for Bitcoin and Ethereum and NFTs and cryptocurrency. But before cryptocurrency, there was cryptography. And um, definition of cryptography is the art of writing or solving codes. So there's a long and storied history with this, um, often used in warfare, uh, World War II. There are some really famous types of ciphers that were used to encode military messages. Um, so there's that's a whole rabbit hole you can get lost in, but. Um, as far as the internet goes and web goes, uh, cryptography is used every day by everyone. Um, it's one of those layers of technology that's totally ubiquitous and it's essentially vital to how everything works and how everything is connected and fits together. So what? back to the question, what's a hash? A hash is a way of taking a value a string, a word, an email, a password, something that's important to you, conducting some operations on it and transforming it into something else. Hashes are one way, which means that once something's been hashed, you can't unhash it, um, which is very useful. So here we're using an MD5 hash, um, and I guess, uh, I'll just look this up really quick because I don't actually know the full etymology or history um, to this one. So it's a type of algorithm um, developed in 91. Uh, I guess there were some earlier ones. 
Um, a lot of this is over my head. I'm not a cryptographer, but this has been necessary for me to learn uh, just through my career. So we're using an MD5 hashing algorithm. Just know that there's different types of hashing algorithms. Um, so if you pop open our code again, and uh, let me know how the if this is too small, if I need to zoom anything in. Um, I just got a new monitor, so things are a little different now. But yeah, so in our in our JavaScript file, we're requiring um, the crypto module, and then uh, we're doing a bunch of stuff to hook it up with Max MSP, and we've got some functions in here. So this is all that's going on underneath the hood. And when we feed an arbitrary string in, um, we're gonna generate a hash from it. So if we wanted to MD5 hash drink bang, uh, we get this result here, A9CB1BB321D66B4041909472121. F E zero eight four five. Yes, it was absolutely necessary that I read that entire thing. Um, we could change this to, you know, Godzilla. Uh, and we're going to get a different hash. Um, change this to Mothra. I okay, get a different hash. Uh, you'll notice over here we've got a little kind of just history of our recent hashes because we're going to be referring to these throughout the throughout the night. So essentially what this means is if you were to MD5 hash Mothra yourself, you would get the exact same number. And the reason this is important is because these hashes are what is stored in databases when you save your password. So you've probably heard about password leaks, um, you know, either maliciously compromised or uh, sidechained or intercepted or whatever. Um, plain text passwords is a huge industry no-no to store those. Uh, if you're responsible for maintaining a database with user information in it and there's a login system, storing a password in plain text, which means, you know, if your password was Mothra, um, that's that's just complete malpractice. You should not do that. Um, we all know people reuse the same passwords across multiple websites. Um, it's a huge security liability to store passwords as plain text. So they're stored as hashes. Um, and not necessarily MD5 hashes. We're just using that because it's simple to say and simple to talk about. Um, <laughs> uh, Snorgaborg, Mothra gave me A7. Yes. Okay, excellent. So. Snorgaborg uh, MD5 this themselves, and it looked different. Now, why did this look different? This is where salts come in. So this is our second topic. Um, we've got some salt and pepper right here. They're called salts because they're sprinkled on top of the input string, and it seasons it, it salts it, it changes it a little bit. And that helps defend against rainbow table attacks and other things like that. So the idea there is the user has a known string they're putting in. You, as a developer or the engineer or whoever's maintaining you know, this application, also have a string that you put in. And you combine those strings and kind of mash them together. And then you generate the hash. And that adds an extra layer of security. Uh, that also lets you do things like cycle your salts. If your database gets compromised, you can swap out a different salt and do a password reset thing. And then, you know, there's just layers and layers of, of different mitigation strategies you can do once you introduce salts. Um, so if I, let's let's see if I can get the same hash as you, Snorgaborg. Um, let's zoom this in a little bit. So this should be just a pure, uh, MD5 without a hash. I'm not entirely sure, but we're learning together. Okay, yeah, perfect. Looks like the same thing. So uh, A7C 874F ends in 655. So pretty cool because not only did uh, Snorgaborg over there generate their own MD5 hash and share it with me, um, I don't even know what backend was used to generate this thing. Uh, 
they use um, this MD5 hash generator. Um, I'm not sure what's on the back end of this, but what's cool is it doesn't matter because the MD5 hashing algorithm can be implemented in multiple programming languages. Here we have it running in Node. Uh, over here, I don't even know what this is. This is, I'm on a Mac right now. This is the MD5. Um, I think this came with OpenSSL. I don't even know what this is written in. But that's what's cool about it, is it doesn't matter what it was written in. It's always going to be the same thing, and that's why it's so useful. Same string goes in, same salts used, you're always going to get the same hash at the end. So we're going to clear our buffer, and we'll say we're going to salt with actually, uh, salting with salt is kind of confusing, so we'll say, uh, oh, I like garlic. Um, on production, it actually doesn't really matter what you use. Like, we're using kind of funny words here, like garlic and pepper and bang. Um, you can have really long strings. You can have really short strings. Uh, just, just adding a salt, no matter what the string is, is going to greatly increase the resilience of your system. So Mothra um, salted with garlic gives us... 65 BDB, blah, blah, blah. If we salt it with pepper, we get 61A, 3FF, 0, blah, blah, blah. If we salt it with bang, we get 61A, ooh, looks the same. That's interesting. Wonder what's going on there. For some reason, bang and pepper are giving me the same results. So, we've covered hashes, salts, um, different implementations of it. I had listed OpenSSL here. Um, why they're used and increases security. Just a quick bonus, um, what is a rainbow table? Uh, a rainbow table is a essentially a database of just about every single possible hash and word combined that you can imagine. So imagine just taking the dictionary and running every single word in the dictionary through an MD5 checksum, and then just having a lookup table of Aardvark is blah, Apple is blah, Bang is blah, and you have this gigantic database and that can be used to uh, reverse engineer what someone's password is. Um, if you use a unique salt, you're immune to rainbow tables, but if you're not, um, this is why you know you see those lists of uh, you know the top 10 passwords people use, um, like I don't know, God or money or whatever they are. They're kind of ridiculous. Um, so why it's really important to use a secure password. All right, so um, that pretty much concludes the light MD5 hash uh, talk. Uh, we're doing pretty good on time. Um, if there's any questions about that, I'll be happy to try and answer them. And if not, we can move into trying to learn how to burn burn an NFT together. Um, so let me just switch things around a little bit. How often does the salt get added without transporting either it or the input in plain text? Wait, how, how does the salt get added without transporting either it or the input in plain text? So 
that's one of the interesting things about it is you, you never actually know, right? You sign up for whatever Uber Eats or Facebook or LinkedIn. Um, you're just sort of trusting that the developers, that the team that built that site have implemented good password hygiene. So you really don't know, and that's kind of terrifying, um, which is one of the reasons that I am optimistic and excited about Web3 and potential applications of the technology there because it might move us away from needing to worry about that as much. Um, you know, I, I just got uh, one of those identity notification things today from one of my banks that said, you know, X piece of data of mine was compromised. And it's like, oh, like what, what engineering, you know, oversight or old library or vector, like how, how did that happen? And I'll, I'll never know. So I can't answer your question. Um, it, it totally depends on the platform. Uh, which kind of brings us to another kind of truism, which is don't roll your own crypto, um, meaning uh, don't don't try to roll, don't try to engineer your own cryptographic library um, unless you're a cryptographer. Uh, if you're just a normal web engineer like myself, um, you you need to be using open source libraries to do that type of thing because there's so much computer science and mathematics that go into it that you're not going to be able to figure it out unless you, you know, devote your life to figuring it out. Okay, so I'm just trying to get things teed up here for this uh, next section. Hold, please. Play some tunes. and his value management. This is just as simple as Sending it to <laughs> it's just a <laughs> it's just a user option. It's just a in the web GUI. I thought this was gonna be a whole like complicated computer science exercise. Select an NFT you'd like to burn the settings option and choose burn token. In some cases you may need to navigate to your contract and click write contract. Oh that's funny. 
Um, can't let me log in. So here's here's our target. Um, this was a meme NFT uh, that we made. It's really actually been a really interesting learning um, experience. Uh, all right, so it's kind of lame. I'm just looking for a burn button. Is that is that all I'm doing? This is an address to send unwanted NFTs. <laughs> send NFTs to address, remove them from your wallet, make sure you actually start in all transfers. So this is totally just this person's... Actually, this is a pretty good home for it. Um, yeah, to let you all in on like the joke, I, I was joking about deleting the NFT off the blockchain, which is of course impossible. Um, that's kind of fun. This might be a good home for it. What a great little project. Just have people send you shit. Oh, there's a VR. Crypto buds totally going here. Oh, this is a great project. Alright. Yes, Island of Misfit NFTs. That one who tries. Pretty intense. I wonder if it just automatically updates. But yeah, I uh, you know I basically don't want it in my wallet anymore. Um, I don't want to look at it anymore. I just want to get rid of it. So uh, yeah, how do I do this? Can you make a new paper wallet and transfer it and then eat the paper? Yeah, I could, but. I don't know, I've been having like some weird allergy flare-ups lately, and I just worry, worry about the paper. Uh, okay, how do you airdrop uh, an FT?
So our gas fees are going to be 0.004713F. It's not bad at all. It's not great, but... Goodbye, Crypto Bud. I release you. Um, so of course the NFT still exists, but it, you know, it's kind of like when you um, throw something in the garbage can, it doesn't actually go away ever. So I wonder how quick this is. It's like instantaneous or not. Alright, well we'll check back here later. What really matters is to make sure it's not... In my wallet anymore. Hey, hey, it's gone. Wow, I feel, I feel so much lighter. You guys break out the transfer cable. All right, so crypto has gone. All right, so that brings us to the last segment. Um, does anybody have any? Anything they would like burned, any intentions they need to release. Um, I'll start with a couple that I had. So you can send me an MD5 if it's really private, um, so that no one knows what it is, but you'll know what it is. Or uh, you can just send me the string, and I'll MD5 it for us, and then we'll we'll burn it together. Um, so. Uh, I'm gonna salt it with garlic and um, crypto bud NFT. Uh, I need to wrap these in quotes um, because of the way Max works. So clear all this. So all right, crypto bud NFT loaded up. Here it is. Uh, DBD one seven. Uh, the the muerte. Hit the button. It's gone. All right. I also want to release. Um, let's see. Burden of history. Let's. So we got another hash there. Select that. I want to release. Um, worrying about the singularity. Needs to be salted with, with the bang. And uh, I think um, it's going pretty good. Anyone out there in chat have anything you want to burn, you want to release? Check Discord and see if we had any. Ooh, Gear Lust. Yeah, that's a that's a powerful one. Gas acquisition syndrome is real. It's, we're gonna pepper that. Gear Lust. 
Okay, Snorga Borg, here's your, um, here's your MD5 in case you want to do a IRL eating paper ritual on your own. But um, here we go, we're going to burn it. Three, two, one. Into the fire. You're welcome. Thank you for for releasing that. I hope it helps. All right, I'm going to share this link out um, in case anyone was curious. This is what I used to build the Node.js uh, piece. And um, yeah, if anyone wants this max patch, I can share this too. Um, got some fun stuff in here. So yeah, that's it for night. Just really short stream. Um, Thanks so much for hanging out. Uh, yeah. Stick around for another couple minutes in case anyone has any questions, but this will be up on YouTube probably tonight. And yeah, maybe I'll do more crypto pyre um, pieces because I think uh, <clears throat> this year in my time learning about Web3 and cryptocurrencies, I feel like um, there are so many different, there's so much, there's so many ways to attack it from. You can attack it as a technologist thinking about the technology. You can attack it as a policymaker. You can attack it as a philosopher. You can attack it as a capitalist, as a consumer, as an artist. And all these things are just snarled together. And it's, I think, a really interesting and fertile place to make art, do research, build a new world and um i think one of the missing components from the discourse is education and enablement so even though we just talked about md5 hashes which don't play a terribly big role in cryptocurrencies i imagine um it is one of the building blocks of cryptography which is what crypto is built on i think just having a the more people can kind of have a basic working knowledge of some of the components the more they'll be able to better understand what you know whatever hot take uh is running on twitter right now jc denton very true yeah like it's there's just so much fear um associated with it and like it's a new thing and uh fear is an emotion that means there's something there's something unknown that needs to be known it's it's your your body or your mind or your brain or you know whatever model of psychology you believe in. It's it's that thing telling you there's something more that you need to understand. And uh, I think being frightened of new stuff is a very natural human response. I think that's part of the reason we've survived for as many thousands of years as we have because we're you know I know eating this mushroom is safe and I know eating that mushroom is not safe. Um, I haven't seen that mushroom before. Why experiment with it? Uh, that's a very deep animal programming that we have. So, yeah, when there's something as new as this and as complex as this, fear is a really natural response. And the way I always attack fear is uh, learning about it. I like to, I like to walk into the fire, you know, like walk into the darkness and see see what's there to be seen. Um, cause a lot of the time the fear itself is worse than what's there. All right, cool. Well, thanks so much for hanging out. Um, it was really fun to, to do this, uh, totally impromptu, um, decided last night that this was going to happen. So, uh, we learned a lot. We learned how to burn an NFT. We learned a bit about MD5, salts, hashes, and, uh, I'll see y'all on the internet. Farewell.